Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I've been missing for a while, and if you read some of my posts or my um, updates, my father passed away, and it's still a little tough for me, and trying to get into normal routine is a bit tough. So um, my mom's been gone for 29 years, so they're finally back together again, and it makes my heart happy. So thank you for all the thoughts and prayers. I really appreciate it. And now we're going to get into a video I've been working on for a long time. And I used some of the new IOD Christmas products. And they're amazing. The paint inlay is a favorite, along with the Christmas Valley transfer. So I did some projects using some of these on thrift store items. So follow along and I'll see you at the end. Here was an old Hobby Lobby sign that I had sitting around for a while that I had bought in at the thrift store. I painted it all white with the DIY white swan, just going over and giving it a nice firm coat. I also wanted to paint that frame just a little bit more updated current black and so I went around with the DIY black velvet and painted that entire frame. I used some sanding paper and sanded some of those ridges and made that white paint just a little bit more distressed along with the frame as well. Giving it a coat of fresh paint and still distressing is still a good idea. I went ahead and put a coat of Big Top onto the white paint because I wanted to use a transfer. And when you're using a transfer, it's important to use that Big Top and have that sealer. This is the Christmas Valley transfer set. It's a favorite of mine. These pictures are so brilliant and so colorful that you're gonna love it and you can make so many projects with this one pack of transfers and you're going to want to make sure you get them now because they are sold out on iod and not many retailers have any left so head on over to the painted photographer and get yours now i go ahead and i paint i tape the top of my transfer so that i know it's in the right spot i peel off the backing and then i flip it back over it's kind of like a hinge to make sure that your transfer gets into the right spot. I wanted it right in the center. I go ahead and use the transfer stick to pull the transfer off onto the paint. Now, I kind of rushed this. It was humid and the big top was not quite dry. So if you don't want to have any trouble with this transfer coming off, um, just make sure that your project is very dry and if it's humid, wait a day and don't do what I did. So some of them peeled up, but I was going for the distressed look and I also could peel some of the letters off of the backing and then I took the DIY liquid patina and I put my head in the way, so I'm very, very sorry. And I went ahead and I used the liquid patina and I stuck those letters back down where they belonged. So all fixable, but just avoid that step with waiting until your big top is completely dry. I took my fingers and I just made sure that the transfer was stuck inside those cracks that were naturally in this frame when I bought it. And it also gives that the distressed kind of look like this transfer has been there for a long time. The next step in making this sign a little bit more vintage is I put another coat of Big Top and let that thoroughly dry. Then I took the DIY dark wax and went inside, especially paying attention to those crease marks and getting it inside there along with the corners. After I had gotten all the dark wax on, I went ahead with a clean, dry paper towel and pulled back some of that dark wax. When I flipped the rag over to make sure I had a clean spot, it really cleaned up and got that bright with an aged look. I had a breadboard laying around and I thought this also needed a little cabin transfer on it. So I went ahead and I 
sanded down that breadboard, making sure it was nice and smooth, painted the top with white swan, and then painted the edges with black velvet, giving this a farmhouse look for that cottage transfer. Then with the paintbrush, I blended in the black to the white. This came out a lot different than what I had expected I was going to do because I was trying to blend this paint together and I was liking it, but this is not where I imagined I would be at the end. So follow along to see where this cutting board came out. I needed some texture, so I went ahead and used salt wash. This has now been added to my website. You can get salt wash right along with your DIY paint and your IOD products at my website, thepaintedphotographer.com. You just go ahead and mix that salt wash together with your favorite paint, and you can make any kind of texture that you want. I added texture to the edges, and it's so easy to add that texture and just stipple with that brush, pull it, manipulate it however you want, making those corners look like they had some aged paint on them. And after I did that with the salt wash, I let that dry for the next step. The salt wash is nice and dry, so I went over with some more white swan and hitting the tops of those edges using my IOD paint blades and kind of maneuvering and pushing that paint around to give it more of a painterly look. And then I went ahead and took a piece of sandpaper and sanded off those top bumps and brought some of that salt wash look from the underneath side back up to the top. I then went ahead and put some big top on this entire project and you can tell it's got a different look than just white and black. And brought that paints colors right out using that big top and then I let it dry so that I could properly put on my transfer. Here this cabin is in the middle of this wreath. If you just cut through the wreath holly you'll be able to use that next time. It will not interrupt that whatsoever. I cut out this little cabiny scene. Again use the painter's tape as a hinge put that right back down in the center and I went ahead and used the transfer stick to push this transfer onto the paint. But again, it was still that humid day. Some of that tree did not transfer. No worries. I took my DIY paint and I went ahead and I made my own painted trees. And to make it match a little bit more, I went ahead and took the white DIY paint and went over some of the snow just to blend everything together. If you make a mistake, don't worry. You can usually fix it. And if I make a mistake, I'm going to show you how I fixed it so you can do the same. Good, good time. 
I made no bake cookies for the grandkids and I ended up with two oatmeal containers. Why I had two, I don't know. And I went ahead and put some cornstarch into the jingle mold using that cute little deer that's jumping. And uh, I took the cornstarch and I flipped it over so that I didn't have an excess amount of cornstarch. And then I just went in with my air dry IOD clay. I love this stuff. I do like the way that it works. You just push it into the mold and then it has a microfiber rim on the end of it. So you can just use your thumb and pull back the excess and it will stay inside the mold perfectly. And then you just, since I use the cornstarch, it'll just roll right out of that mold as I'm finished with it. And I'll be able to put it onto my oatmeal container and let that thoroughly dry. I used some DIY paint in letterpress gray and after that mold was all completely dry, I went right over the top of it. I added a little bit of salt wash to this paint. I don't show you that process, but it has a little bit of texture in it. And then I went ahead with white paint and I just slightly dry brushed over top of the gray paint and the deer giving it a frosted type of look. And you can see all that texture that is on the can versus just the can. I then just added a cute little Christmas tree. Simple project anyone can do. My second oatmeal can, I wanted to use up some of this thick dried up paint that's in the bottom of one of my containers. So I took that dried up paint and I just took a transfer tool and I put it onto the oatmeal container. This paint is made out of clay and it was easier with my fingers. <laughs> and it's made out of clay and it's gonna dry, but you can use all those bits of dried pieces to add texture to your projects. I didn't wanna see this oatmeal container. I didn't want you to know it was an oatmeal container. So I just added all of that dried up paint to this container. If some of it is too dried up, add a little bit of water, let it sit for a bit and it will absorb that moisture back into it and it'll be pliable for you to put on an oatmeal container. You will have lots of texture with just the DIY clay-based paint. Now I can feel good about using all of the paint out of the jar. I wanted to distress back down to this texture, so I put a coat of the DIY Big Top on top of it so that I didn't go down to the oatmeal container. Using a coat of White Swan, I went over top of this can and you can see the texture in this can as I'm painting it now. And I needed to do this with a paint inlay, so I went ahead with a second coat. I let the first coat dry. I went on with a second coat, making sure that it was nice and wet. And I took the new Noel paint inlay and I put those ornaments into the wet paint. After you get it where you want it, squirt it with some water, making sure that it adheres into that wet paint and then let them all dry.
After they are dried, I leave the paper on there, the inlay on, and then I go ahead and distress some of that texture wherever I can see it, wherever the paper isn't. That way you won't have a smearing effect with the paint inlay. It's still protected by the backing paper. So I went ahead with a baby wipe, distressing back down to that gray color, brown color. Remember, I um, put big tap on it, so it's not gonna go any further than that brown color. So I went ahead and gave that can just some aged on the top and the bottom. Now is my favorite part of the inlay. You spray it with some water. Let it set for about 30 seconds, making sure that it's all nice and moist so that it peels off really nice. I went ahead and sprayed a couple other ones while I was waiting for the first one to get nice and um, ready to be taken off. And then you take that backing and you pull that backing off, releasing that paint onto your project. This is the most satisfying part of the paint inlay is seeing all of that paint staying on your project in the shape of whatever you put on there. And look at that, isn't that so fun? You can use these paint inlays two to three times. That piece of wood is the second time that I used this paint inlay with a more vintage look. Now I had a flat, thin board. I was using this DIY paint. It was a oops color that I had gotten from Debbie and I went ahead and just put it onto this board, it looks like a cross of aviary and salty kiss. Both of those colors I really do like, but I was trying to use up some of my paint that I had opened. And so I went ahead and used this green on the entire thing. There was some paint clumps and I just smooshed it into the edges moistening it with some water so I can manipulate it a little bit more. And I put it onto the corners of the edges. I wanted this flat board to kind of look like a ceiling panel. And uh, um, so this really worked to give it some texture and uh, some just fun look to the edges. And again, on this project, I didn't want to go down to the board, so I gave it a coat of Big Top so that it wouldn't distress down to the board and it will only go to the green paint. This paint inlay Christmas one, it's called Noel. It has some really fun projects in it and there's some big paint one sheet inlays that you can do some nice signage with. And I went ahead and used this gingerbread one. It's a full sheet, so you need kind of a big board to do that. And you can cut it up if you want, but I was leaving it the same shape that it was. And I went ahead and used white swan because you need wet paint for the paint inlays. And I put white swan over top of this green paint. And then I'm going to put that inlay into that wet paint for a fun vintage sign look. Chilling and having 
having a good, good time. Distressing those edges with a baby wipe while that transfer sheet is still on there because then I don't have to worry about smearing the paint inlay. And it might not be perfect, but at least you get the majority, the bulk of your distressing done in a safe mode. This was a big paint inlay so i did use a spray sealer outside i did not show you that but if you want to be careful because it will smear this paint inlay if you go over the top with a water-based sealer so i went ahead and sprayed it and then i used the big top over top when it was dry and then i came in with some clear wax i wanted the look of wax but i also wanted to make sure that that paint inlay was all sealed in before i used that wax and then i used the dark wax to bring out some of that texture that we made on the edges again i wanted this to look like an old ceiling tile that was painted up with the christmas scene An old ceiling tile wouldn't be complete without some metallic look, so I used the Golden Rule Wax along with my finger and just pressed it onto the edges. And this is a wax, so it's nice and soft. And you can manipulate it wherever you want it. And I just was giving this a metallic look on the edges, kind of going into the center just a bit. And then if, it, if I didn't like some of the areas, I could go back with a paper toweling and wipe some of it off. But this Golden Rule is an amazing product. It is so metallic and shiny. It's, ooh, it's so good. Up next is the Cozy Stamp. This one is becoming a favorite of mine as well. I've seen a lot of projects with this stamp and it comes complete with mask so that you can stamp layers and some of those um, cross stitch patterns that they have are so cool. When you first get your stamp, you do have to season it. I go ahead and do that right as soon as I open my package. I take a 100 grit sandpaper and I do a complete line all the way down, flip it and do one more sanding all the way down and across the entire stamp. Now it's completely ready. I use that cross stitch pattern along a jewelry box that I had. Nope, it's not a jewelry box, it's a silverware box. And I went ahead and used some of those stamps and put a pattern on top of here. I'm also going to use some transfers on this box that I'll do as soon as I put the big top on. So these stamps are nice and dry. The red did not show up on this black like I was hoping. It's very, very subtle, but I still didn't mind it. Let me know in the comments if you liked the red or if I should have redone it. So now here I'm going and getting some of these transfers to add to this silverware box and give it a little bit chazazz. Did you enjoy those products? If you did, you can find them at thepaintedphotographer.com. 
and you'd better hurry because they're going fast. And I just looked on the IOD site yesterday and they're all sold out. This is a limited release, so get yours now and follow the link that I have below. I did a few more, just little sample boards. That's all they are, it's boards. Look at the gifts that you can make using the Cozy Stamp, the Cozy Stamp, and this little cute elk, moose, reindeer, <laughs> from the Christmas Valley Transfer Pack. This is a paint inlay along with some of the DIY making powders to make that Christmas tree a little cheerier. Thank you for joining me. And again, if you want any of these products, you'd better hurry. Head on over to thepaintedphotographer.com. And if you haven't liked my channel, please do so. All of your comments, likes, and subscribes really help my channel to grow. So thank you all, and I will see you next time. Happy painting!